Yeah, recording in progress. Okay, good evening and uh, <laughs> welcome to the March 2nd and final meeting of the Capital Finance Community Task Force. My name is Cynthia Kress and along with Jamie Finch, we are the chair and vice chair of this committee. I want to start by thanking all of you on this task force. You all showed up. You all came well prepared. You brought an open mind and an open heart. Lots and lots of patience. Um, and a heck of a lot of commitment. So it's really been an amazing group of people and it's been really rewarding for me. Um, such thoughtful, robust uh, community engagement is one of the things that makes Issaquah so great. It's why I intend to live here the rest of my life. Um, I wanna thank Mayor Polly for convening this task force. And I wanna thank all elected officials past and present for your commitment to these kinds of boards and commissions. I know that it's a big lift from a staffing perspective, but it's a very meaningful way to engage. Um, this evening, we will first walk through the comments on the report, and then we'll each have an opportunity to address Mayor Polly directly. Um, I had in mind that we would do that um, first with um, specifically substance for the recommendation, and then I know she has uh, questions for us to um, that she'd like to talk about the process and so forth. So. Um, we each have about 90 seconds to share our most important thoughts with her about these recommendations. Um, you don't need to represent the group. You can just represent your own thoughts and feelings about that. And it need not include comments about the process because we'll have time to do that separately. But I want to give you some fair warning. I will be enforcing the time limit in the interest of fairness and, fairness and efficiency. So um, keep your comments to about 90 seconds. And um, that way, each and every one of us can get an interrupted couple of a minute and a half to share with her um, directly. With that, that moves us to the minutes. So I am seeking um, approval of the minutes by unanimous consent as presented. I see a couple nods and I don't see any other comments. So hearing no objections, uh, minutes are approved as presented. Okay, well that brings us to public comment. Um, before I ask Andrea if there are any folks who wish to make public comment this evening, I do wish to acknowledge two emails which came in earlier today. The first is from Connie Marsh and the second is from Corey Christensen. I would like to encourage all members of the task force to go and read that email at your earliest convenience. Um, and I would like to thank the commenters for taking the time to provide public comment and to acknowledge that some of the points, several of the points that the commenters made were some of the very same issues that we have been wrestling with ourselves. So, Andrew, with that, is there anyone else that is planning to make public comment this evening? Um, I'm wondering if Connie Marsh is still uh, on the phone and if she wants to make a comment, or Juliana, if you see anybody else. I'm going to unmute you, Connie, if you would like to make a comment. I'm also on video. I'm not on the phone. So if you want to get my picture, that would be awesome. There we go. And up we are. So, ooh, it's not moving. Um, I was able to fret today about my email and I wanted to reinforce are you hearing me all right or am I breaking up? Okay. I wanted to reinforce my main fret, which is from the community survey. There was the assumption made that because uh, of how it fell in the chart, that transportation would be of super high emphasis. And, you know, I just can't disagree more with that because that is really not how our city works and and so we have such high emphasis on our green spaces and our critical areas and so many other things and um i don't think next time we do that community survey that we should use this same format because i think it can send us down a very bad bunny hole that does, does not reinforce the community at large. It sort of interprets what they say in a manner that they did not mean. So I had like 
10 hours to ponder that. And I, I just got to say, I think the basis for that chart is incorrect. Thank you. We have any other public comment, Juliana or um, Andrea? We do not have any other public attendees. Okay, thank you. Andrew, did you want to make any comments before we dive right into the reviewing the draft recommendation report? Um, yeah, I yes, uh, I have heard um, from some of you. Um, so thank you for those of you who have given me your uh, some of your feedback before the meeting. So I'd like to summarize that and then I do what we did last time in terms of get your um, uh, just to make sure that if we make any changes to the document that those changes come from uh, the whole body and not just one person. So I'd like to just see if there's some uh, consensus around those changes. So um, third, uh, I'm pulling up the notes here. Um, first is um, the the table in the document on page page six that talks about that summarizes that ranking activity for the criteria from an your individual point of view versus um, our attempt at trying to think of, you know put yourselves in the a place of the general community point of view and the ranking of those criteria. Um, I was asked to kind of clarify that further and make sure that the titles of the of the um, columns there are uh, clear. And so it did say task force ranking, um, changing that to individual ranking versus the general community point of view ranking, just to try to provide some more clarity. Um, I think I, I've heard a few comments about this table and trying to make sure that it is clear in the past. So I wanted to run that change by you. Um, do you need us to pull up the document in order to reference that table? Saying no. Okay. So um, overall, thumbs up. Is that an okay change? Okay. Not seeing a whole lot of disagreement. So we'll. we'll I'm not seeing any strong disagreement. I see uh, former council member Goodman uh, be ambivalent about it. But if you have comments, please let me know. I think I just have a quick comment. You know, I think it still reads as though you're not sure if you're just a reader reading this thing and you're not involved in this process, you're not sure who's making those, who's providing those, the, the points of view, unless you go back and look at the paragraph before. So, um, I don't know, I think you might revise it to say something like, um, you know, each members, you know, I, it's just, it has to say who's doing the ranking and from which point of view. And it still doesn't say that. I think it's still confusing. Um, so, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to take a bunch of time here, but I think it's still confusing. Okay. I can sit, I can send you something via email, but then that's not in front of the group. So, um, um, I'll send something in chat if I think of something will work here. Great. Thanks. Appreciate that. I think Jamie had a comment. Thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, and I had mentioned the same concern and sent over one suggestion. So I don't know, Andrea, if that is worth bringing up, but I had made a recommendation on how we could go about that by basically having a merged column over that it's task force feedback and then as individual and then as community general point of view. So I similarly still felt like the table was, I think the, what you mentioned was an improvement. I still felt like it could be misinterpreted. Um, so that was my suggestion. So I don't know if there was, if there's any other um, thoughts on that, but that was one solution to that. As I said, I'll just pile on, oh, I think I sent it to the host privately. I meant to send it to everyone at defaults. Sorry. Um, I was just gonna say, I think it just needs to be crystal clear that it's our interpretation of what we think 
the it's us thinking on behalf of the community. It wasn't actually the community. It was us trying to put ourselves in the minds of the community and what we thought. So I, I think that was kind of a minor point, but I think maybe that's the essence of what we're grappling with. There we go. All attendees. Okay. Welcome. Okay. Great. And uh, and. Jamie, I don't think that that whole uh, picture that you sent really came through because I didn't see that part in your in what you sent me. So I appreciate you clarifying in the meeting. That's great. Um, so that sounds like that would achieve the aims of trying to make it very clear um, as to what this table is trying to convey. So uh, I think we can then move on to some of the other comments here. Um, uh, there were some comments about um recommendation number six uh which let me pull up the page number here for your reference recommendation number six is um on page nine and uh recommendation number six refers to the tbd sales tax and one of the things that's discussed in the additional considerations and feedback section is uh, concerns about the economy and the uncertainty of the economic climate. And so um, I heard a task force member say, well, they don't necessarily, um, you know, entirely agree with, with all of the reasoning of that statement. And so um, just added some clarity that some task force members, um, the way that the sentence would read is, one of the reasons some task force members recommend the medium term time frame of four to six years over the short term uh, is the high degree of uncertainty in the current economic climate. So that just qualifies it a little bit to let the, to let the reader know that this wasn't necessarily shared by all of um, the task force members, but certainly a subset of them and wanted to make sure we, we conveyed that opinion. Um, that sounds like an okay change to make. Getting some nods, great. Um, I know some of this stuff isn't that exciting, but again, I'm trying to make sure that this document really reflects your voice. And I don't want to uh, make any changes that anybody's uncomfortable with or would surprise you to read afterwards. So that's why we're kind of going over some of the, the more uh, kind of wordsmithy stuff. And I think um, we can get into more um, policy matters later as you like. Um, and then there was the recommendation to reorder uh, some of the tables. So there's a section in the report uh, that tries to simplify some of the recommendations. So it says recommendation simplified, and this really starts on page 11. And so the recommendation was instead of going into the tables uh, where the revenue tools are listed by, by bucket, by uh, type of, of infrastructure, to instead have the tool, um, have the table that's titled Summary of Recommended Revenue Tools and Time Frame. That's the table that says short term, uh, task force recommends ending fund balance and ARPA, and that could fund a mix of projects across categories per city council. Medium term, um, uh, levy lid lift, TBD sales tax, and what that would fund. So that's the table that kind of summarizes the tools by time frame. And this person felt like um, that might provide a better general overview, and then you can kind of get into the details by um, infrastructure, type of infrastructure or bucket. And so it's just a matter of reordering the tables. Um, is that an okay change to make for everybody? Okay. Not seeing a whole lot of dissent, so we can move forward with that. Great. Um, and then, uh, so um, another thing, uh, as you may have noticed with this version of the document compared to the last time that you saw the recommendations report, we did add an executive summary and we added uh, the addendum of having uh, some of those um, revenue tool comparison charts that we worked off of for a couple of sessions. So those are in the addendum in the back. And um, one of the comments that was made is to really make sure that in those tables, that it's also very clear that 
the estimated revenue um, in those tables is not the task force recommendation. This is just an example um, of, of um, what a rate could be as allowable by law. And so that it's not actually a recommendation, it was just information the task force was using in your considerations. And so we can make that addendum a lot more clear. I tried to clarify that in the report as you requested, but just kind of forgot that when I added on that addendum. So we can make sure that that's uh, a lot more clear in, in the wording so it doesn't appear to the reader as though uh, the task force was recommending those taxation rates. Um, and that's, that's reflective of feedback you gave me last time, just making it consistent. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the executive summary. Um, one of the requests that we receive is to um, provide a, just one sentence or a brief summary of the rationale per, the, um, per each recommendation. So um, as it is right now, it's pretty much just a very quick synopsis and listing the recommendations. And the ask was that maybe it'd be best just to provide a little bit more context than what exists in the executive summary and a, a quick synopsis of the task force's rationale um, for each of those recommendations. Um, so does that sound like an accessible change to make? Yes, no? Okay, getting some lukewarm feelings. Any dissent? Brad looks like he has something to say. It looks like Mr. Boyce has something to say and I had a comment, but I bet they'll say the same thing I was gonna say. Brad, why don't you go ahead? Or I, did I misunderstand? I know you don't put anything in chat, but you look like you had something to say. Yeah, actually, I probably would. You know, my only concern is just to be careful not to be redundant. I mean, I, I, I already saw a little of that, you know, in the executive summary, kind of almost similar wording as to the introduction. And I, I think it, <clears throat> if you read too much redundancy, it doesn't really solve much. And so to add something more, uh, you know, you, if that would be fine as long as it's not redundant of something that's already in the report for recommendations on, that, that would be the only thing. I don't like a lot of redundancy on reports. Mr. Voice, did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just real quickly, um, agree with Brad, redundancies in reports are awful. And then also, I guess we're leaving that into your very capable hands, deputy administrator, since this is our last meeting. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with it. Just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. And then I was going to make a comment and I think Andrea has extremely capable hands, but I also think that uh, summarizing sometimes is harder than you think. And summarizing rationale and when when something is bigger and it has to get smaller and you have to boil it down to the essence sometimes you're faced with trade-offs that seem pretty easy so i guess i would just suggest that how do you all feel about giving her some latitude if she feels really confident that she's captured it but if it starts to get squirrely as she tries to summarize maybe we should can it um I, I could also uh, work with the chair and vice chair to fine tune that language. Okay, that seems like a good direction to me. I think I know what my marching orders are. Great, thank you. And then I think that there were, um, that kind of concludes the feedback that I heard from most of the, the members. I think that uh, Cynthia and Jamie, you have other things that you wanted to uh, discuss with the group. Do you mind, do, Jamie, do you mind going first uh, with your comments? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, one of the, I guess, concerns or, or comments I had was related to recommendation number seven. Um, I know that we had taught, which is specific to the levy lid lift. Um, I know we had talked about what we were kind of unable to get to consensus on, like, how that should be used. I don't recall, and I was just curious, I wanted to get other people's feedback. I don't recall us setting a medium time frame for that. 
um, as I, I didn't know that we had really settled on anything. And if anything, I felt like it was something that would come after the parks district uh, unless we found some need. But I was just curious, I, I would be really interested in people's feedback on what their, where they saw that coming in and whether we did did kind of dictate that or, or if it was left or open as my recollection um, was. Go ahead, Tim. I sort of had a, a related uh, point of feedback just in the order that we're making these recommendations. So the one that comes recommendation number 2 um, speaks to the ending fund balance, which is 1 that I. I personally disagree with I'm fine that that's if that's the will of the group, but it almost seems like it gives it more importance or like that's the 1st thing that we should do. And in my opinion, the 1st thing we should mention should be ARPA. Then we should mention um, that transportation should be the, the focus. Then we should mention, um, you know, the, the way to pay for that, but maybe de-emphasize that portion, because if you're just reading this report, and that's the 1st thing, it almost seems like. That's the crux of the matter and I, I don't know, it gives it a level of importance. Um, that doesn't seem commensurate with how big of an impact it could make. Let's go back to Jamie's point, because I have a lot to say about what you just said, Tim. So thank you for um, bringing that up. But I think we should. Um, and Jamie, I'm wondering, I was, I have to confess. I was actually looking at your notes, my notes and um, I, I wonder if you could just repeat yourself real quick. Because it sounds like it's somewhat. Yeah, similar. I guess at my, the, the, at the highest level, do we feel like the levy lid lift should be in the medium term or did we leave that or should we leave that more open and flexible? Um, because I, yeah, because I, I think we discussed specifically ordering and, and priority of the TBD sales tax and the parks district, but I, I just don't remember us settling on medium term for the the levy lid lift. So before I go through the list of chat, I'm going to say that I actually saw it differently. I thought we did specifically say medium term. Um, and so maybe by we could start with just like a, um, you know, I mean, we can certainly have a discussion. I think we should have a discussion about it. I think it's a super important point, but maybe it would be good just to have a quick um, show of hands for those who think we did say medium term. Looks like we're about half and half. So that's in Parker also. So maybe if I counted noses, maybe a slight majority, but not a they call the full majority a, a, a strong majority. What do you call that? Um anyway, it's it's not an overwhelming majority. Um and so um Susan, Andrea, you have something to say. And Susan and Brad, I see that you commented, I want to finish on this topic. So if you have something to say about that. Andrea, I'm going to let you go out of order and go next, and then we'll come back to Susan and Brad if it's on this topic. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the task force, this is one of the polls that the task force took um, a couple of meetings ago uh, on the levy lid lift. And it's possible you don't recall it that well because we didn't discuss it too much that evening. We discussed levy lid lift a lot last time, um, but but um, not when the vote was taken. So maybe that's that's part of the, the issue here, but it was uh, in one of the polls and how uh, the task force prioritized the revenue tools. Um, that said, if you wanted to make a change this evening, um, obviously th that's up for discussion if you um, and make any changes as you would like. Yes, yeah, might be splitting hairs. One is what do we think we agreed on? And then are we, is that? Solid, do we still, even if some people, maybe if it's not unanimous, do we still feel that way? So, um, it sounds like. We pretty much did, but are we, are we do, are we interested in revisiting it? So, Susan, did you want to comment on this topic? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to offer my recollection of. Why we sort of were talking about that as, as a medium term, um, and I think it was in part sort of a tactical. Um, decision or comment because I think um, a lot of us felt, and I think it's reflected here in the report that a parks district sort of necessarily had to be longer term just because of the, you know, the logistics that 
you know, our surrounding setting up a parks district, it would be a new thing for us. And then matching up the need of where we felt like the, the, you know, what, what the, the uses of the funds would be from the park district were also sort of matched in that medium to long term. So that felt good. And then we had agreement on the short term. So that kind of left that medium term gap and we needed to have some funding in there to start um, building out uh, for those needs. And that's how I think part of us, at least half of us, ended up with the levy lid lift along with the TBD sales tax in that medium term. So it was kind of maybe just a simple practical um, decision because of, um, you know, to get the revenue stream going. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Brad, did you have something to say on this topic? Uh, probably more than you want to hear. Actually, this is one of the ones that I don't quite agree with. Um, in part, because everybody needs to just be aware that a, a park district, essentially the funding mechanism is a levy lid lift. And so uh, one of the reasons why I'm somewhat opposed to this particular recommendation is if you use a levy lid lift for a bunch of other things, whether it be transportation or facilities or anything else, prior to trying to go to the community for a park district, you really it's really going to be adverse to being able to pass a park district because people aren't going to want to do so many levy lid lifts. So um, I guess that's where I kind of confuse things to some extent is by putting that in the midterm. Um, it, it's a little deceiving because you're also going to need to be dealing with it uh, with the parks district. Sorry to muddy up the water. Oh, no, but, that's but... okay. I think that we're we're yeah we're we're reopening something which I think we're doing it with intention. So I'm I'm fine with having this discussion. Um, I want to ask Andrea and or Mayor Polly or anyone that has expertise on this. I I know that conceptually a parks district is is assessed uh, on property values and I'm not sure exactly the mechanism, but is that a fair statement to say it is also a levy lid lift because. I think that would be new information that we didn't really consider in this discussion. Um, it, it would be an additional property tax. So the parks district um, is a property tax. The levy lid lift that's a that's on the property tax levy. So you'd be lifting um, the current thresholds on the on the property tax. So they're both property taxes. Okay, that that's consistent with my under, my understanding, which is different and maybe you have to be paying close attention to understand the difference but I, I do think they're fairly different um and i'm going to leave it at that and say that it uh, looks like jamie has a comment thank you cynthia yeah i just wanted to expand and maybe respond to uh, that i remember now that the survey had ended up with that result i do think that's before we had settled on well we didn't settle but that was before we had discussed a use of the levy lid lift and i just i just wonder how we could be thinking about a midterm, like long preparation sort of revenue tool that we don't have, we don't know what we want to use it for yet in the midterm, given that the preparation for that would effectively need to start very soon. So it just seems hard for me to understand how that would work, given that we couldn't land on how that tool should be used. Uh, so that was just response to, to what Andrea had mentioned about where that had come from. I want to see if anyone else has anything to say before I jump in once again. Okay, um, I think if I recall, I think it, uh, Jamie, your point is really well taken, but I think that what we did is we did another survey and we were split almost down the middle. I think it was 5 to 6 and there were about half this group thought that the levy lid lift was um, going to go to also support transportation, but it also had the. Um, ability to support other projects as well. And that we kind of came to the conclusion that it's a little messy, but we're getting to the point where there's so much more work that's gonna have to be done before we really hone that, that it felt like it was counterproductive to try to take that all the way, to chase that one all the way down to a firm recommendation. And so we left it the way I feel like it is written in the report, which is the transportation and possibly some mix um 
So I felt like the ambiguity that we kind of ended up deciding not to resolve was is fairly well reflected in the report. But I think it's a word of caution that even though it's medium term, you wouldn't want to run too fast too far without nailing that down a little tighter. And perhaps um, also including concerns like Brad just mentioned about property tax fatigue. But I, I would be uncomfortable calling it a levy, calling the parks district a levy little if I, it all comes out of your property tax bill. So I'm comfortable with the concept of property tax fatigue, but not naming it something so specific. Go ahead, Jason. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just that's kind of what I recalled too is as far as the levy lid lift, as far as being midterm, as we discussed, you know, basically having the administration be able to have some discretion and being able to put it in. I think we talked a little bit about infrastructure, and maybe that's where the lines kind of fell five to six. Um, feeling like the TBD itself would be more towards infrastructure. I think that was the one that had like, you know, if we went all the way, it was going to be close to 200% or covered or 120%, I forget the number, it's not in front of me. But I I felt like the levy lid lift we did talk and that was one we were kind of talking about more discretion, infrastructure, possibly priority projects, leaving that more open-ended. And then again, the TBD primarily for transportation and then the parks board, uh, the parks district, obviously for parks and trails. So that's kind of what I recalled similar to you. Andrea, well, where does that leave us? Uh, I guess maybe go back to Jamie. I might be hearing that we've circled back. Have we convinced you maybe that this does reflect the will of the board? Um, no, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the uses of the fact that we've ended up split on the uses of fund to me doesn't explain why putting it at medium term. I, I think I, at the time, I'm uncomfortable with surveys and polls in a, in a, like, in a vacuum when we hadn't even talked about how to use the funds yet. And so I think that's just the piece that I, I really struggle with is how, um, if we think that's important and we want to do it on that time frame, and yet we don't have what it's going to be used for at this point, and we can't agree on that um, versus other tools that we can, I, I'm just struggling to understand. Um, and I think also the feedback from the board that that wasn't clearly how we all felt coming out of it does seem to reflect that there is some other concern, but I don't know if, if not remembering it that way means that they like don't think it should be in the report that way. Those are two different things, but sure. that was just my concern is that I, it just seems strange to me that we're setting that time frame when we don't know what it's going to be used for. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it necessarily should be further out than that, but I'm, I just, I question us putting in a time frame when we don't have a use for it yet. And, and I think flexibility, again, if we were to take what we did on the funding sources, flexibility would be keeping it um, TBD based on where we identify a need. I see that Andrea's got a comment and I'm hoping that maybe you've got a way to maybe tie this up. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if I do. Uh, so I, um, Given all of the conversations the task force had about the two medium term tools, the TBD sales tax and the levy lid lift, I um, had some difficulty drafting up these recommendations because they were tied for some, you know, tied together for some who wanted to use both tools to fund transportation, but that wasn't uh, the majority of the group or the, the overwhelming consensus of the group, so I didn't want to write it up that way. Um, so what I did in the report, as you will um, I used a little bit of different language here uh, for recommendation six and seven. And for seven particularly, it says the city should explore implementing a levy lid lift to fund either transportation or a mix of projects in the medium term time frame. And um, the, the way that uh, I understand the conversation of the group and the recommendation of the group is that there were many, many tools that we looked at, EMS, levy, um, many things that didn't come up in the recommendations list, but here are the tools that the 
task force largely wants the city to focus on in the future. Now, there was a lot of latitude that the task force, from what I interpret of your recommendations, a lot of latitude that the task force is providing the city administration to consider. So to fund transportation, is it a TBD sales tax? Is it a levy lid lift? Is it some combination of both? Is really where I heard the majority of the group land uh, that they wanted council to consider um, and ask those questions for the medium time frame. So um, if, if that's correct, then I can try to clarify the language um, as the recommendation from the, from the task force to say really this is the task force recommending limiting down those tools to these few in the recommendations report and that in the medium time frame, the task force wants the city um, council and the administration to really explore TBD sales tax or levy lid lift and or levy lid lift and what those things would fund. Not necessarily that the city absolutely should do both, um, but that we should explore those things um, over some of the other tools that we've discussed in the past. Is that accurate? And does that, and if I phrase that better, would that resolve your concern, Jamie? I think the phrasing would def definitely be a really important part of that because I do think we have pretty clear consensus on the TBD sales tax. So equating that with the levy lid lift, I don't think that's necessarily, but as long as, I, I do think we were all in agreement, agreement that, or at least most of us were in agreement that the levy lid lift should be considered and framing it that way would help resolve but just ensuring that yeah language was that was different between the tbd sales tax and the the levy lift, lift given their just difference in consensus we had on those two items i see tim has had a comment on there for a little bit Go yeah, ahead. i think um the challenge we're getting into is conflating the two different methods, right? The TBD sales tax and the levy lid lift. But I think maybe it was either Jason or Jamie made a comment and, and mentioned basically the mayor or the administration's discretion. And I think we could sort of phrase it in such a way that, look, we want to prioritize transportation projects with a funding amount that's commensurate to, to our highest priority issues. And we should do it in a, a short or medium term uh in the right amount based on economic conditions i think the reason we want to go medium term on this rather than short term is the economic uncertainty and the pandemic and now international affairs right so you know defer to the administration's um, discretion but say an appropriate mix of those tools over short or medium term based on conditions on the ground based on a prioritized list at the discretion of the administration and that sort of encapsulates a lot of that murky stuff and it's intentionally vague because we don't have that list of projects, but at the same time, kind of, I think, crystallizes as best we can right now what our sentiments are. Thanks, Tim. I just want to echo that I something Jamie just pointed out and that I think Tim's comments maybe softened and that's I do think we were more unified on TBD sales tax. And I want to, I think, I don't know that we want to re recover that ground. I think we, I, I think to, like he said, to, to put them together in the same level of recommendation, I think we're much more unified on the timing on the TBD sales tax. And I would like to not lose that. And I'm seeing lots of nods. So hopefully we're getting closer. Jamie, what else did you have? I know you had a couple things. Has everything else been addressed? I don't remember. I think we covered everything else through the other items earlier. Okay, I do have one um, fairly major one, um, but I was sort of waiting for the end. Does anyone else have any other comments, large or small, on the report? I see Councilmember Martz nodding his head. I also put a comment in the chat. Why so. is it that I never see yours? Oh my god. Oh no, I saw you. I seem to miss you disproportionately. Huh. Well P apologies, please. Oh yeah. Sure. Not in there. I mean I, I 
The other people can't see it that it says comment right after Andrea. You know what? It, it defaults to this for some reason. This session is defaulting to the host privately. No, That's mine said from total marks to all attendees, but whatever. Um, anyhow, uh, I mean, I think, you know, we have recommendations um, in in, you know, boxes and bold letters and whatever. I mean, I think fundamentally what's going to happen is. Um, when the council goes to take action, council members will cite this, uh, the work that's been done here. And I, I, I guess I would suggest in terms of how this reads and, you know, what things were universally supported versus what things were sort of conditionally supported or, um, yeah, conditionally supported would be a good way to put it. I think of it in terms of principles, priorities, and proposed actions, right? Um, I think we as a group, uh, there were a number of things that were principles that we probably uh, more or less all agreed on or had strong agreement. Um, some of the priorities, uh, you know, have, the, sorry, I'm sorry, just a second. Um, uh, you know, I think it's more contentious on priorities and perhaps contentious on proposed actions. But I mean, I would suggest Andrea thinking in terms of as you go to parse what's in here, um, what's going to be digestible by a future council when it goes to um, make some decisions because people will quote chapter and verse. And so the clearer it is, I think maybe we can get away from some of the contention if we if we sort of set aside what what are the principles that came out of this group because there's some that that I think were pretty universally held so anyhow that's the thought thanks okay Cynthia can uh, I address that for clarification please that that that's really please okay so uh, thank you Councilmember Martz. I attempted to uh, put in the recommendations and phrase the recommendations of what was the majority consensus um, from uh, the task force. So where there were things that maybe we voted on uh, or took polls on where it was split five, six, I, I, that wasn't an overwhelming majority, right? Um, and so, uh, so, so the recommendations, um, as they're numbered, uh, is really what I heard from most of the members of the task force. I know not 100% in every case. Um, and I tried to really capture in the additional considerations and feedback sections under every single uh, recommendation, the um, kind of minority voice or dissenting opinions or those points that were raised by others. And so I know it's not organized in terms of principles, priorities, and proposed actions, um, but it is a way of trying to convey, here's what most of us agreed on, and here's some additional considerations to help um, with any decision making. And so um, does that, uh, does that uh, address um, the point that you were making? Sure. I mean, because if you if you go to speed read it, those are the things that you come up with anyhow. So a council member who hasn't been part of this process, that's the things they're going to start with anyhow. So if that's you know if we have general agreement on uh, the stuff in the boxes with the blinky lights and you know if you didn't use special fonts, but uh, you know then then that's that's the bulk of what future councils will cite. I think out of this out of this effort. Thank you. I have a comment about the order, but I'm going to um, invite uh, others to speak first. So I think Susan was next and then Brad and please speak up if I'm missing anyone else. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to just uh, make a suggestion about definitions. I, it, when I was reading through the report, it really made me think about. The conversation that we had close to the beginning about the 3 buckets and. The difficulty of wanting to know what was in the 3 buckets, but, you know, we weren't really supposed to focus on what was in the 3 buckets. So we kind of just called them transportation facilities. And parks transportation in particular, I wonder if it would be helpful to. Do a little bit of a definition of what we thought 
was meant by transportation. And what I'm really getting at is the whole conundrum of, wait, is this congestion transportation or is this um, infrastructure and maintenance of our streets transportation? Is this lights and sidewalks transportation? Because some of it's mobility, some of it's transportation. And I think it could just really help to define what we thought was in the bucket um, so that sort of we can bring folks along as to why we thought that was the most important bucket and ultimately why we were recommending that be a top priority. So I don't see that specifically called out in the report. And um, so just suggesting that that maybe we illustrate it with like transportation could include this, this, and this, but it's not strictly limited to traffic congestion. Thank you. All right, go ahead. You know, we identified three priorities, um, transportation, parks, and facilities. I guess to me, there's a little bit of a missing link here where we don't really have a recommendation for facilities. I know we didn't talk about it to maybe come up with one, but it looks like it's something missing from the report until you get to the very end of the report and actually see that there's a chart that actually addresses it. And so I guess my recommendation is, is that if, if the chart is something that can be agreed upon, that maybe a recommendation needs to be made in line with that chart. Um, I don't know, to me, facilities is also an important item and we haven't really addressed it with a recommendation. It's maybe late in the game, I don't know, or too late in the game, I don't know, but that's my comment about the overall report. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Voice. Thank you, Chair. So this is just a, a response to Brad. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I think that's kind of how we fell on the levy lid lift, right? It, because I think there was an actual conversation that happened prior and we kind of all talked about where's facilities. And I think that's where that kind of ended up because again, we were talking about how, yes, a lot of our structures, facilities, you know, there's no real chance of dilapidation at this point, but it costs more in the long run to let them go um, basically unworked on or upkept. So I think that's kind of, you know, going way back about 20 minutes ago, that's kind of where that levy lid lift, as far as I recall, I think that's where we kind of ended up with the four to six. And then again, kind of giving the discretion to the administration, okay, well, this particular property tax, you know, maybe this one, you guys take a look at the city and and you're able to put those monies where you need them. Whereas, like I said, the TBD, I think the reason we fell on such a big consensus with the TBD is because we all kind of felt, well, if you're going to do the TBD, you know, that could be in conjunction with uh, big grants, um, you know, the big marketing campaign, uh, really, because again, we kind of talked about how when it comes to transportation for anything really meaningful to happen in people's lives, it, it's going to have to be a big project, right? We're not just filling potholes. So even though it's a very important part of it, um, again, these are all conversations that have happened over the last three and a half months. So from my recollection, that's kind of where I remember the facilities. That's kind of how we crept it in towards the end. And that's my, that might be why there's a little bit of uh, ambiguity between facilities and the levy lid lift. <laughs> Hope that helps. Okay, so thanks everybody. So. Um... I bet everyone's feeling like a little tiny bit of lack of resolution. Um, I think Susan, your comment is really good. I think there's a lot of really good discussion here. I'm going to make a suggestion. So it's 650 and we're not just out of time, you know, for this agenda. We're, you know, we're, this is our last meeting. Uh, I remember in graduate school, a professor of mine said a good thesis is a done thesis. I think the more time we spend with this, the more we will understand the shortcomings and all the things we didn't get to. I think Susan, that con that conversation is not something that can just be addressed through some, you know, wordsmithing. I think maybe it might be worth saying that we didn't clarify that and that is some it's it's a fairly major piece of work that will have to be done. It kind of gets at my main comment I wanted to say with my 90 seconds to the mayor um and some of the comments we heard today about congestion um but I'm going to suggest, and I'm curious, so I, I think we have two options. We either have to live with a little bit of this messiness and, and imperfection and, you know, sort of not carrying this quite as far as we, this 
incredible group of brains, you know, probably has the potential to do so. But with the time we have, um, I think that we either have to uh, push out the, the delivery to the mayor and to council and really dig into some of these questions, or we need to accept that our thesis is a done thesis and, and um, we get to ponder all the shortcomings um, the next go around. Um, and I guess I'd be looking to others who have more experience, both council, the mayor and Andrea um, and, and, you know, the vice chair, Jamie, to see um, what you think of that. But we have always start with the mayor since that is, this is her task force. <laughs> <laughs> Could you maybe take a stab at answering that? Sure, that, sound, that sounds great. Thank you for that question, Cynthia. Um, I think that's where we are as well. I think we could have three more meetings talking about, you know, all that's written in there or maybe some new definitions that we want or maybe some additional explanation. But I think you've more than accomplished what my ask was, which was to really take a look at the capital needs and the revenue tools to support those needs and to make recommendations that get passed up to a seven person council. Two of them are sitting here, five of them are not, who will then receive recommendations from the administration with project lists, revenue tools, and their conversations will be even more convoluted because it really is, you know, the, the harp, uh, cart before the horse, meaning. I didn't let you guys talk about the details of the projects, but they definitely will. And so, and that could feed into an additional level of complexity for them, depending on what the project lists look like, whether or not levy, levy lift lid is something they want to consider. But you've done everything I've asked for. You've um, provided recommendations. Some of them are strongly supported, others are mildly supported, and others are varying opinions. So I think you've accomplished what I had hoped you would. And I think the document shows that there was great discussion and some consensus, but also a lot of, I just call them options, that many of you supported different financing options for buckets um, in different ways for different reasons. And I think that's okay. I wasn't expecting a five line, you know, five lines of recommendations and 100% consensus. So it's definitely meeting my goals. Andrea? Uh, well, Mayor Polly, you're a tough act to follow. I don't know that I have anything else to add to that. <laughs> but, you know, I do want to make sure that this report says what the task force wants it to say. And so we've talked about uh, some wordsmithing or some additional language. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it would be helpful for me to have really good direction from the body about what language you would like to add. So if you would like to, to add um, some of the converse, more of the conversation about transportation, I know, um, for example, it was brought up a number of times concerns over not really being able to move the needle on congestion. Um, that was certainly part of the, the conversation um, at the time. I don't think we included anything of that in the report. Um, and uh, and so, so I look to the group to to help um, provide direction on what additions um, or edits you would like to the document. And um, if you're willing to grant uh, your chair and vice chair uh, the ability to review uh, the document in lieu of having another meeting for a, a, an additional review from the whole body. Well, let's see. Um, I think there's two things on the table. I'm not sure what order. One is, um, does this task force feel close enough to, is remand the right word, to, to send it back down to, to chair and vice chair to noodle with? Should we revisit that question after everyone has gone around and had a chance to say kind of some of their key messages to the mayor? Um, because what, I would propose on this congestion thing is basically what I'm about to say in my couple seconds. Um, and then the other thing that I, I just, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, 
cover, and Jamie and I talked about this a lot, and we uh, let Andrea and Jean know that this is just, this is, I've been holding it because it's kind of its own distinct thing. It's not a substantive, um, but it's the order of the recommendations. And we, Jamie and I spent a lot of time thinking about how we're going to, um, with of course, guidance and leadership from, from staff who put a lot of time into this, but how we're going to present this to council next week. And what we realized is the order of the recommendations in the report um, didn't really flow in the way that we felt natural, like about how we wanted to present. And so we actually are wanting to reorder them. And then we realized, well, you can't really reorder them in the council presentation and the slide deck and then have them in a different order in the report. And so even though this is, um, it's not a huge deal, I don't think, but I guess our question to you, uh, so our meaning Jamie's and my, I think if I could speak for Jamie as well, is um, could we, would this group be amenable to changing the order of the recommendations to follow a narrative that goes something like this? If I could just name the four bullet points, um, I won't go into each recommendation, but they would follow, they would be reordered to support this narrative. What was the top priority and how would we fund it? What were the other buckets and funding tools that we felt should be considered? How should we use existing or uh, short-term revenue sources, ARPA, for example, um, and other details and um, funding methods and next steps that should be considered? So all the recommendations would be reordered to support that narrative. And that's not the order they're in right now. So we were just really struggling with how to present in parallel with the way it's written and it just wasn't jiving for us. So we looked at the report and realized that they really are independent chunks that could be moved around. And I'm wondering if you guys are comfortable with us literally, and I think someone alluded to this earlier about the number two being in its position, the um, ending fund balance being coming up as the second one seemed odd. So um, uh, I see that um, a couple people have comments and um, Let's start with Mr. I mean, I'm going ahead to council members because I've heard less, but I take that back. I don't know. I'm not keeping score, but as long as it's on this question and then we can revisit if it's not, we'll come back to you, but let's start with Mr. Boyce and then go to council member remarks. Okay. So 2 points as someone who loves to present, I'm behind you guys reordering it as long as you know, the, the mix is still there, right? The same ingredients. There's nothing worse than trying to present something uh, that you just don't feel comfortable with. So I'm okay with that. I more power to you guys. You guys are going to go present something. You guys should feel strongly about the presentation. And if you guys want to reorder what we have, all for it. And then just something that the mayor said real quickly, and I, I couldn't agree more. We could have another six meetings, and I won't put a percentage, but we're going to move the bar pretty much incrementally at this point. I don't think we're going to get a lot more consensus with another three to six meetings. I think kind of uh, chair this, the, the, the thing that you had mentioned about your, um, your thesis comment, it's, it's pretty spot on. I mean, we could spend six more meetings refining this and refining this. And I think this is, it's pretty, like I said, I can't think of a good analogy, but bottom line is. You know, it's kind of like taking an A minus to an A plus. I mean, we're pretty close. I mean, I think everybody's been able to say their piece. Um, you know, for the most part, I don't, I can't speak for everyone as far as how they feel about it. I feel pretty good about it. Um, so again, I, I, I think at some point people have to understand it is going to be a little messy. Um, but the, the, you know, the gist of what we wanted is here and let it go forth into the world. So, thanks. Council remarks. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. I, I I understand the concern that people have that people w that uh, an audience will will prioritize the earlier items higher. But um, you know, if you go to present to council and you've got seven recommendations, the council will listen to all seven and they'll be happy to pick nits on items five or item seven. Um, you know, unless it's like a three hour presentation, in which case um, council's eyes will glaze over after an hour and a half or two hours. And not um, hear items, f f you know, five, six, and seven as much. But you know, with seven recommendations as the core anchor of the conversation, you'll get strong engagement from council on all seven. So I guess I'm saying that 
I, I don't think if people are worried that council will just hear the first few ones as more important than the latter ones, I think seven's a small enough number that I don't think that'll be a problem, but other minds might disagree. Thanks. Okay, so maybe we're just not as confident as you. Does are you do you have any objection to reordering them? In the report and in the pre okay. That, that was my point that I don't think it I don't think it matters. I, I understand. You don't mind if, some I think you're making a case for leaving it as is. You you don't mind if we move them. Correct. Or if we leave them as is. Got it. And then uh, Councilor Mahal has a a question. Yeah, I was thinking really similarly in that I don't personally think it matters. Um the, how the flow of the, how the recommendations are structured, but I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to what your desired outcome to changing it based on the narrative that you described would be. Jamie, I've been, they've been hearing a lot from me. Do you want to take a crack at that? I, I can certainly answer it, but I, I feel like I've taken up a lot of the oxygen in the room. How, do you mind? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, there's no like rocket science. It's just like, trying to follow a logical path through how that also follows the process that we went through. So we started with what bucket do we want to prioritize? What are the revenue tools that we should be putting against our priorities? And then at the end, we talked about what are some other uses of existing funds and what are kind of some next steps? Do we want to bond, et cetera? So it follows kind of the way that we went through this as a board, but it also for us just was how we decided we could have chosen a different way to do it. We could have just gone in the order, but it was the way we felt could help us walk through with with um, a little more structure. I don't want to spend too much time on this. It doesn't seem like anyone's near as worked up about it as Jamie and I got. Um, Tim, go ahead. Well, I made the comment. And it, it's, it does assuage my concerns a little bit to hear from Tola and Zach that it doesn't matter too much. I would just say the 1 other lens is the public and reading it as well. Right? And so we want, there are citizens that read this and they may look at that and perceive it as a top priority. And so in that regard, it may be a positive to. You know, start at the top with our highest priorities or kind of strategy and then work down to tactics. But I don't know that it's the end of the world, but that's just. One wanted to look at it, not just council, but also the, the public readers that um, potentially could, you know, be supporters or, or um, um, detract from its success if, if it goes to the voter at some point. That's all. Ooh, okay. Um, this is great. I feel really good about where we got to. I, I think that may be a wrap for the first half of our meeting, but um, maybe I'm Missing something? Am I missing any uh, comments or? Uh, okay, I'm not seeing any objection to moving along. Um, the next item is to talk directly to the mayor and we spent a little bit of time and thank you, Mayor Polly, for meeting with us beforehand because Jamie had the great question of uh, what do you need from us in this meeting? And um, so I think that, so we noodled about um, and we are, I think we're not quite used to dealing with an audience that has been so attentive from the whole time. And so we were like, eh, how do we, you know, what do we want to say? So that's why there is no presentation. Um, but we just thought that this would be a good opportunity um, to share. And so um, I'm going to accept volunteers for the order. I would like to ask the council members and um, Jamie and I to go last. So that leaves um, Six other members to go first, so I will um, probably have a tough time actually timing it. No, I can time it, um, but I do want you to um, to share your thoughts and have this opportunity to uh, address the mayor directly. Um, mayor Polly, did you have anything you want to add before we jump right into that? That's no. Okay. Okay. So. Sorry, sorry, I did. I didn't know I was on mute and you can't tell I'm talking because I have a mask. So. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, yes, just a couple quick things, Cynthia. Um, I want folks to feel comfortable to say whatever they want, but in addition, I'm going to throw a few little questions in the chat. You just participated in a process that we've never done before. So this is only the second task force that I've ever had. And again, it was formulated in a way different than we've done in before. So I want to know what it was like for you 
um, participating in this? How do you want to be continued to be involved in this participating in the next steps? And how do you think it went as well as anything else you want to talk about or mention in your comments to me? And again, uh, before we start, just a huge thank you. I threw you a very messy <laughs> set of uh, information and constraints and you guys had a hard conversation. So I appreciate everything you all have put into it. So whoever you want to start with, Cynthia. So I'm going to just put a slightly finer point on this with your uh, permission. And that is, um, I knew that you had these questions. I'd love to have uh, two of these conversations. One is where we talk about the substance, what yes. we would like to share with you, and then subsequently go back all the way around again and talk about the process. Would that be okay with That's you? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Great. Let's do that. And I did get my iPhone out to time people, so you'll start hearing chiming. I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> um, so, do we have a volunteer to go first? Maybe uh, Tim, go for it. Thank you. You don't need to start the timer for a little bit. Um, I would just say largely, I, I would agree with by and large, a lot of what the, the task force has come up with here. Uh, that is to prioritize transportation to raise funds through a mix of, um, you know, the right mix of TBD and, and, and levy lid lift again, discretion given to the administration as we get a, a, a maybe a, a list of priority projects. So we know how much to fund and then come up with a strategic way to go after that amount. Um, a balanced package with something in it for folks within the city and, you know, uh, the city at large. Um, you know, I agree with a lot of what uh, Connie said today in terms of I, I don't like the, uh, the perception of a, a parks bait and switch. I think it's really important that we can't let it be perceived that way. The language in there was kind of nebulous and I think it's important that we address that because that'll be a deal killer if that's the perception. Um, I liked her focus on police as well. I don't know if we've talked about that quite a bit. Also, I stated it earlier, the ending fund balance, diminishing that. I'm personally opposed to that. I understand that as a group, we decided that was one tactic. Um, I'd rather be a little bit more conservative there as it won't have as huge of an impact. So overall, those are my strategic thoughts. In terms of tactics, I really think a traffic management system would be a huge bang for our buck and something that we're looking to, whether it's a mandate of this task force or the, the city council or mayor at large, and then, you know, targeted tactical, you know, turn lanes and things for locals that prioritize things for folks that live here over people that are passing through shuttle buses for Talis and the highlands and turn lanes for folks on Newport way, things that help our locals and that are, that are really tactical. And then, oh, my, my prioritize transportation, raise funds in a smart way and a bias for action. I would pull those things for transportation into near term 1 to 3 years, knowing that it will take a while. Even if we say go today. Before actually shovels in the ground to some of this stuff, um, and if we're, we're here and doing all this work and all these bright minds, let's take action. Let's do something now. And thank you for having me uh, be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, who wants to go next? Okay, Brad, thank you. Uh, thank you. I could probably talk to the mayor for a good hour on this. I don't, I'll try and do it in 90 seconds. Um, you know, I really think that we need to be cautious about levies, levy lid lifts, all of that, whatever we want to call it. It's still expensive to live in Issaquah. Um, I just read that that uh, Issaquah 2022 property tax is going to go up 8.38 percent this year, so we have to be extremely sensitive about how we use levies. Um, I do think that the park district is the way to go because it's sustainable funds for parks rather than bonds. Um, I have uh, involved the park board throughout this process. I've updated them. We also had an ad hoc team to do a little deeper dive. We're all in agreement that a park district is the way to go for sustainable funds versus bonding. Uh, the park district or the park board, however, is very opposed to putting it in long term. Um, and I'll just give briefly why. Uh, in fact, we had a, a unanimous uh, motion Monday night at our park board that basically said we we strongly recommend that it be moved up to me medium term instead of long term. One of the reasons why parks, I think, has been considered satisfied by the community is, is that for a number of reasons, but we've been successful with two park bonds over the last 20 years. 
to try and keep up with the growth and development that's occurred. Um, but unfortunately, our last one was nine years ago. And frankly, we're ready for another one now. And so if we push parks off to six to nine years, oftentimes ranges, you end up going to the end of the range. So that could be potentially 18 years from the last bond before we actually have funds, you know, to improve parks. Um, so I think that, you know, we have $28 million in unfunded projects just in the six year CIP. We have 102 unfunded projects long term, which is the next 14 years. So the more you push that off, the harder it's going to be to ever try and catch up. Uh, I think that uh, it's possible to actually put um, TAB together, um, running in tandem with a park district um, in a medium term situation with an emphasis of targeting uh, transportation, maybe at the early part of the range and park district at the end of that range, rather than creating such a long range for parks. I guess the last message I would leave you with in, in this reference is, what is Issaquah known for? What is one of our most special treasures of Issaquah? It's our natural landscape, it's our parks and trails, it's our open space. Um, and if we don't invest in those as we grow, continue to grow, green necklace sticks out for one thing, um, we are gonna fall behind. And that's why I think it's really important to do all we can to try and shorten up that time frame for a park district. It's gonna take a few years to get ready for that. So can you, you know, can you wrap up? Yep, it's gonna take okay. a few years to get ready for that. So I do think that we need to get started with that at least a few years before we would have a target date for funding. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's going to go next. We're going to come on, guys. I'm going to have to start calling on you. All right. Stacy Goodman. Thanks. Um, well, the first thing, you know, I want to start out with by thanking everybody who worked so hard to do this, Andrea and her team and everybody who participated um, in this. And it's was it's just a very um, complicated topic. And um, I just appreciate everything that every everybody did to try to have this conversation. It's certainly the most in depth conversation on this topic that I've had ever since I was on council and ever since I was reporting on city government. So I think it was a really, really great exercise. Um, I am very creative um, in terms of how it was put together and um, I compliment the mayor on her vision for putting this together. Um, the my primary concern coming out of this is that no matter how the report is written, it will be received by um, important folks. And by important folks, I mean community, um, park board, council, administration, anybody who takes an interest in it as sort of black and white recommendations, which I don't think that's what they are. We were, um, we were asked to make uh, choices, recommendations um, in, and it's been mentioned several times over all of our meetings, um, sort of in a vacuum, which means um, isolated from the context and the context meaning we didn't get to look at projects. We didn't get to talk about what's the, what the context will be when those decisions are made about how we're going to fund things. And that's, that's, it's difficult to make recommendations when you're missing that context. Um, so, it, I, I do think it's a valuable exercise. I um, am very appreciative that I, I got to participate. And, but I, what I'm hoping is that we can communicate to everyone that receives it, starting with when it goes to the council, um, is that these are, they're, they're more about, um, I, I just hope it's not oversold as recommendations and it's more about general guidelines. I did have a chance to watch most of the um, park board meeting on Monday where um, when they were talking about this, um, I didn't watch um, and see the, the motion, but um, they're unhappy. They're, they're super unhappy with this long term part. And um, that's what concerns me is that this is received as this is a strong recommendation strong recommendations about certain certain things without context and and I don't view it that way. 
So that's one of my biggest concerns. At the same time, I don't want it to be so, so mealy that it's, it's nothing. So again, I think this is the start, not the end. Um, and I think the next step is to figure out what the next steps are. And we've got some pretty good next steps in the report. Um, anyway, that's my biggest concern and I just wanted to communicate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Jason. Thank you, Chair, and I'll just begin by saying how much it's been a pleasure working with all of you. I can't wait till I get to actually meet most of you in person, uh, but the work itself has been completely enjoyable and I've really enjoyed my time. And I do um, kind of along Stacy's lines, I've, I've never really kind of thought of this as a principle, like these are the re recommendations. I've always kind of thought of it as a guiding document for the administration, for council, um, you know, basically, we're kind of the community members at large, and maybe that's because that's what follows my name. That's really all I've ever thought about it. So, um, again, to kind of echo Stacy's point, as far as the process or, or the, rec the report itself, I generally agree with almost, almost all of it. I think for me, the hardest thing was the timeline. And I am pretty happy with the timeline we've come up with. Uh, the one thing I would mention, and again, it's already been mentioned, was I have always kind of felt like the next year to two would be kind of a time for the city to come back and basically become whole again. I think that's why I kind of push things out to the medium term, because again, it, I think Tim mentioned it, you know, we're still not out of a pandemic completely. Uh, we're still not even meeting in person. Uh, we have inflation that's the highest in 40 years. You have the situation in Ukraine. Uh, we're hearing about oil that might go up past $107 a barrel. So I just think right now, uh, we're probably not gonna get a lot of popular support for raising property taxes. And in a very inexpensive, in a very expensive and generous city as it is. Um, so that's kind of where I felt like the next two years would kind of be taking care of in-house stuff, maybe get someone in city hall. I know we let some people go at the beginning of the pandemic. And again, maybe not taking on huge transportation projects, but filling potholes, doing those things, kind of helping the quality of life. One thing that I heard from a couple of our guys was, you know, really need to go big and go home. I couldn't agree more. So if you're talking about a TBD in a medium four to six year range, that seems about right to me, right? Because you need time to get the marketing. You want to tie it in with uh, obviously the voters who are going to be tied in. And then also give you time to see if you can uh, combine them with some grants, because those are the things when we talked about transportation that are really going to impact people, um, you know, really have some possible uh, good effect on terms of in terms of congestion and things like that. So ultimately, very happy to be here. I've enjoyed all of it. Enjoyed meeting all of you guys and working with you, um, and very happy with what we've come up with. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. Yes, thank you. Um, I also just wanted to say how much I personally got out of this experience. Um, meeting my uh, fellow task force members, seeing how different people view the world. Um, it's just been really interesting and informative and and um, I'm just glad that I was able to contribute in some way. So thank you for that. Um, I wanna mention three quick things. One is, you know, my sort of guiding light to this whole process was the original capital improvement plan First couple pages message from the mayor to me, that was my complete orientation to why we were doing this and what this process was all about. And as somebody who's kind of new to this, I kept going back to that and grounding myself on that. I hope that we provided some insight onto the prioritization, but I feel like there's just so much more prioritization to be done, which I know that um, council and and mayor will certainly be doing that going forward. A um, uh, couple other things. Um, I also feel like in addition to the context, I think Jason was just mentioning about like the environment around us, the pandemic. I also feel like if you look at around at our fellow cities, what Seattle's going through, what some of the other communities are going through, it feels like we're a little bit of an inflection point of keeping the good stuff we have before things start decaying too far. <laughs> and whatever your view of decay is, whether it's services, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's quality of life. So I really, um, am excited about trying to be as appropriately aggressive as we can of 
being proactive and keeping and maintaining and building before we're into the repair and, you know, really kind of degradation mode. And I know that's, that's sort of a qualitative thing. It's not a hard and fast, but I, I worry about that a little bit. Um, and the other thing is that I think the messaging to the community out of this whole process is going to be really important. So I understand there's a lot more process to go through what the council is going to be doing. If there comes a point where there is kind of a, um, a request back to the community for funding property tax, you know, uh, all the different things that we've talked about, I think. Uh, messaging to the community about why it's needed and what they're getting out of it is going to be key. I just learned a lot from that early discussion about the prior efforts. And so if there is an opportunity to contribute as a citizen to that kind of uh, communication planning, um, I'd you know love to have a role in that somewhere down the line. So thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Councilmember Hall, do you mind if I, I was, in, oh, I was going to come to the, you guys last, uh, I was kind of hoping Parker would go next. How about you, Parker? Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Unless you had something specific. You, yeah. Okay. Oh, I can go now. That's okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh yeah. So, um, I think being on this board is a really great experience for me, but honestly, I don't think this is really a great board to have a youth representative. I think there's a lot of content that's. It kind of uh, goes over my head, and um, I feel like there's there's like barely any times I have anything of substance to add. So um, that's just one thing that I was thinking. But like for me personally, I learned a lot of it just being a part of this board. I thought it was really um, really great experience. But yeah, just I think it's a good thing to keep in mind for the next board about the role of a youth representative just yeah because obviously i wasn't able to like add much to, to these meetings but yeah that's about it thank you i, I personally am really glad that you're here and i um am really impressed with all of the youth members that i've met because i can just tell you for sure that when i was your age i was did not have that kind of patience and attention span. So good for you. Uh, every little bit, uh, you got to start somewhere and you're starting way younger than most. So that's, I think, really inspiring. So thank you for your time. Uh, Councilmember Hall. Oh, and I just want to put into the record that Stacey Goodman just said, thank you, Parker, for your honest feedback. That's really very refreshing and I agree. Um, okay. Uh yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, definitely did out of Stacy's comment. That's great feedback um, for, you know, as we consider future boards and stuff like that. So thank you, Parker. Though I will agree with Cynthia that I enjoyed your presence here for sure. Um, a couple, um, oh yeah, a couple additional things I wanted to say. Well, I guess I'll just start by echoing what I've heard from other people and saying that I think there are some pretty outstanding minds at play here and I really enjoy I really enjoy people who make me smarter or make me think differently about an issue or make me challenge assumptions that I have and I have a kind of a running list of quotes that I've kept from people and it's pretty long um so you guys clearly contributed to that the newest one is now a good thesis is a done thesis by Cynthia thank you for that um I was thinking really similarly to how um, Susan started off her comments. The CIP was my guiding star um, for how I approached our conversations in this work. And I think it's important um, that the council and anyone who um, comes across this report in the future is that there aren't any silver bullet solutions here uh, and that this is the beginning of a very long process. We were tasked with reviewing unmet capital needs as described by the 2022 through 2027 CIP and to determine whether or not we needed additional funding and what those additional funding sources could be. That's it. Those were the only two policy questions that I had in my mind as we went through this. Um, these, you know, funding all these priorities, if we, if we realize these solutions, it's not going to solve traffic. It's not going to um, realize downtown growth as part of the central Issaquah plan. So I just think that's an important thing, an important takeaway that I wanted to share with this group that, that, you know, 
I think we just need to be very focused on the fact that this is about funding unmet capital needs in the CIP and not infrastructure in general. Um, so, thanks. That's great. How about you, Councilman Marts? Thanks. Uh, 90 seconds, go. Um, all right. Well, you know, I think what's critical is go big, move the needle. If we're going to ask the public for money, it's got to be for something that's transformative. Obviously, there's a real question about uh, what's transformative that we can afford for transportation, um, which is which is so which everybody agrees is is, is so critical. Um, I think that one of the recommendations, recommendation two, talks about uh, I think bonding or potentially doing that rather than pay as you go. I think that that naturally brings up the question about consulmatic bond authority, which is touched on very lightly. It's touched on lightly for a potential 168 million dollar uh, lever. Now we can't afford 168 million dollars. <laughs> we could go build the 10th uh, 10th Avenue overcrossing if we could afford 168 million dollars, but. Um, I, I think it's really important that bit about don't pay as you go. Uh, you know, if this is going to be a, a benefit to the future, so the future should also help pay for it. Um, so I, I, I really think consulmatic bond authority is going to be an important option. And uh, I don't think we should be afraid to use it. Previous councils weren't. Um, and that also gets at the general fund question. The best way if you want to use general fund dollars. Uh, to move the needle is to use general fund to pay for councilmatic bond authority. And my 90 seconds are up now. Thank you. Councilman Marcy, you can do more for the only person so far that stayed on time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, unless I'm getting confused, I think Jamie's next. Thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, I, first of all, just really enjoyed the format of this. I think getting a chance with all these great people to discuss and we don't often, we often in boards and commissions get presented at a lot and get limited time to discuss. And I think, um, and this is credit to Andrea, really helping engage us and, and draw, draw out discussion was a great part of it. Um, in sort of my in terms of my comments, uh, two main things that I, I really think, and it's more focused on the next steps. And as we think about that part of it is one, we have a lot of issues that cut across the buckets that we have. Not everything fits cleanly within transportation within some of these other buckets. And, and I'm thinking specifically about things like the ICAP, the climate action plan, the just generally the environment. And obviously those are the things that are near and dear to my heart, but I know that there's more. And so I do think that as we look to the next steps of actually getting to criteria for how we prioritize projects within these buckets, making sure that we're factoring in not just the overall bucket that it's in, but some of these other issues and other priorities that just by nature of us having limited time and not wanting to cut it up and slice it up too much, we didn't cover. I don't think that that should be missed in the next steps that that the the whatever body takes this through. Um, so I think that's that's one. Um, the next item is really. Let me think. I just lost my train of thought. What was I? Um, I had something. Give me a moment. Oh, yeah, remember. Okay, so the next thing that that'll go against me on my time. So the next thing was around uh, really how we engage the public and make sure that we are hearing what they have to say. We have taken, and I think Connie points out a fair point that we've taken this survey that this, the that citizens build out and we've tried to extrapolate it. We've tried to figure out how can we best take the community voice and put it into action. We may not get everything right. And so I do think that what's really important about our next steps is how do we go out and validate or invalidate? And I think that's an important thing is we should not be going out with preconceived notions or structuring things in a way that we're gonna get the result that we we started with. And so I, I really, that would be a key part of next steps is how do we make sure that we're getting honest feedback about what people actually care about? And this also came up with what Susan was mentioning around transportation. What do people care about? What are the types of impacts that they want to see within transportation and what are the projects that support that? So I just really hope that we go above and beyond and that's maybe where it will take us a bit more time to ensure that we're 
not guessing at what what the rest of the community wants, but really strongly and fe feeling like we know what they want, and so that we can structure a package and uh, a marketing plan that 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 targets them and meets them where they are. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, Mayor Polly, I had something that I wanted to share, and I um, think what Susan said really resonated with a lot of us is that that we didn't. It was beyond the scope of this project to define what was in the buckets, not just the name of the projects, but like what do we mean by that? And I think so. We have to take that with a grain of salt. But I wanted to share what I think about the transportation um, being the number one priority. So I don't speak for the committee, but um, I want to urge you not to confuse and I, I know you probably don't but just to make sure this is said that you don't confuse transportation with elimination of vehicular congestion i think that trying to eliminate well we know that trying to eliminate vehicular congestion is not a practical goal but what i the flip side of that is i really believe that we can and we should improve mobility for all we can create a more equitable more efficient more resilient transportation system that's more consistent with our values and so I think if we go out and we promise that's just transportation and people get confused and are left to think, um, and some of the public comment we had by email today suggests that people are immediately conflating transportation as the priority with reduction of, of vehicular congestion. But I think it, the, the part that's lost when we just get into that discussion is that we, what we can create a more, um, we can improve mobility and we can create a more equitable system and, and that would be transformative. So I just wanted to share my thoughts about that. Um, and look. <laughs> okay, um, so I was just gonna go ahead and put again in the Lost you you got put on mute again. Yeah. Ah, everyone, sorry about that. Um, I, I muted myself when my time was up. I wanted to say that I put um, the mayor's questions in the chat again, brought them forth again. Um, thank you for indulging that part of the discussion. I really wanted to um, to give everyone a chance, and hopefully, you guys felt that that was useful. And mayor, I hope that you thought that was useful. Um, now, um, gosh, I've been moderating. For a while now, and it's time for everyone just to have it a free for all. Who would like to start by answering the question? Cynthia, uh -huh. um, before we go to the last couple of questions, I just wanted to uh, jump in with a couple of little thoughts. Um, it is so fun to come and listen to all of you highlight either your concerns or your ideas or your priorities like this. To sit in a sit in a virtual room with you and let you all talk about what was important was great. That was enormously helpful for me, uh, for council members who end up watching this last video, enormously helpful for them because there was a lot of good thought and deliberation they went into, but your diverse opinions also kind of reflect the diversity within our community. And then Cynthia, I did want to address the congestion question and being sure that we are clear on, we can manage better and more efficiently and more equitably our traffic system, our transportation system. But yeah, people come here to shop they shop mostly around I-90 and uh, people still drive through town to go home somewhere else. And, and we're reliant on some other big projects to even help relieve that. But it's it, we have to be very, very clear on our messaging about that. So thank you all for that. And I would love to hear your thoughts on next steps and participation. We're going same order. We certainly could, but now I don't remember the order. I just remember that um, I asked uh, chair, vice chair, and council members to go last. But um, gosh, this is about how far I got with. I was I just spent a lot of time thinking about how to manage this meeting, and it was fairly challenging. It's kind of <laughs> open ended, um, and I got to about here. So, <laughs> how about I start calling on people? How about Mr. Flood? You are always got something great to say. Me? Oh my gosh. So I this, the order. that's the nicest anybody's called me a loud mouth in my whole life. Um, <laughs> so, I'll, so everybody's comments just as, you know, being part of this group and it's been, it's been great to have just, you know, all these different varying opinions. Everybody's been respectful and, and as we disagree, 
And, you know, you nailed it, Mayor, that, you know, this we sort of reflect, I think it's by design, sort of, you know, a representative of the different constituencies and things in the city. Um, all that being said, I think we came to something that I, I agree with, you know, 80% of, and that's pretty good outcome. Um, if there's anything that was frustrating to me was just, you know, not being able to, to dig into specific projects. And so there's that ambiguity as we hand this off to say, are we looking for 20 million or 40 million or 80 million? And then, you know, being able to touch on those priorities, those projects and how much they are would help us be a little bit more um, pointed with our strategies as far as which funding method, I think. And, and um, you know, this team would have the ability to kind of dive in and go deeper. Um, one of the constraints of the prior task force I was on when it came to projects is we were sort of given this kind of wish list and didn't vary from it much. So if you do get to something that is more crowdsourced as we look at projects, leave it pretty open ended, make people do their homework and come up with their own list rather than start from someone else's wish list. Um, but that would be my one thing to improve upon, you know, the next iteration of this process. If you look for something a little bit more finite, but overall, um, a good, a good group and a good process. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Wants to go next. How about you, Brad? You look like you're about to unmute yourself. Well, I as well appreciate uh, the opportunity and uh, not only to, you know, and get involved in this process, but also to meet you all, even if it's just a little tiny cubicle on a screen here. But one of these days, I, I look forward to meeting you all in person. Uh, you know, for me, it was a bit frustrating, I got to admit, because I'm not usually in a group of people with so many opposing views. <laughs> um, and uh, but that was a learning experience and maybe a growth experience for me. You know, I found myself a lot of time because I'm very opinionated that I had to step back and and listen and uh, take it all in and and maybe agree to things that I didn't agree with. Um, but but that you know that can be a good thing. It's frustrating to go through a process and not reach consensus. So so that was that was a bit difficult for me. But this is probably one of the more hardest topics that I can think of for the city to try and undertake, which is why we're here in the first place. If it were easy, it would have been solved years ago. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been a growth experience, uh, a rewarding experience, and I would like to continue it uh, further beyond this. Where I'm not exactly sure. I'm certainly open to continuing to express my views, you know, in all of this to the council, to the mayor, or anybody wants to listen. Um, I certainly, if I can, am able to continue on with the park board, would like to probably get more actively engaged in the park district. That's going to be a fairly long process. Um, and we're going to probably need an additional task force for that. So I think that would be another opportunity uh, for me to uh, grow in my frustration. Um, how did it go? I thought it went well. I thought, Andrew, you did an outstanding job. It, I, I can't even believe how hard it is to try and take people with so many opposing views and try and put that in writing that any of us could come to, to accept at the end. Uh, so, you know, kudos to you for all your hard work in, in that respect. Um, so overall, I thought it I thought it went well. I do think that this is the beginning and not not the end. Uh, and uh, I do think that it was a good, um, it's going to be a good opportunity, a good framework for the city council and the mayor and the administration to at least take this and move it forward. And, and I think um, the mayor said it very well at the beginning, we accomplished what she was looking for and, and that makes me very happy. So thank you. Oh, Jason, how about you? Are you willing to go next? Happy to, Chair. So I'm going to echo a lot of what Brad said. Right off the bat, I want to thank Deputy Administrator Snyder, who did a fantastic job. And really, again, uh, tough crowd. And you were able to, all those conversations, put something that uh, I think definitely not only encapsulates the spirit of what we did, but pretty well says it. And I think like like Tim said, 80% of what I felt, I think came across. And again, I know there were a few times where I was the outlier and I know sometimes someone else was an outlier. Um, that's how these collaborative processes work. So as far as being helpful or 
participating. I'm always happy to participate. Uh, love our community and definitely love getting to know new people in our community. And that's one of the reasons I love these type of processes. Even though I don't know Jamie, it feels like I've known Jamie a while, Cynthia, Brad, uh, Tim. So again, I, I really enjoy these type of processes. They're not so frustrating. I know if some people get really frustrated as far as consensus stuff. And, but again, I think I just, I think I came at it a little bit differently and that's fine. Um, again, I, I really enjoyed the process. Uh, to be quite honest, my biggest gripe is that we're not doing it in person. That's my biggest gripe. And I know, um, for, hopefully, that will change in 2022. Um, but being able to talk and have that banter in person, for me, is kind of, it, it's a world of difference than doing it on um, WebEx or Zoom. So other than that, I enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the first few meetings being informational. Uh, the next few being deliberative, and then the last few being basically wrapping up. So again, kind of bummed out that this is our last meeting together, but I'm sure I will see you somewhere around Issaquah sooner or later. So thank you. Thank you so much, Stacey. Would you mind going next? No, nope, not at all. Um, well, first of all, to um, to Brad, I just want to say, I don't think people get involved in this um this level you know uh without being opinionated um and so i think we're all probably fairly opinionated it's just a matter of how we express our opinion you know i'm usually known for my soft delivery of my opinion toll is laughing <laughs> that was being i was being sarcastic um so uh anyway i the process i think was um was was great um i think the I, the frustrating part was, like I mentioned before, providing um, recommendations um, in a vacuum, which I think was frustrating. I think the, um, the other thing that I thought um, personally was a little bit lacking and also a little bit in a vacuum was um, probably not enough of the, uh, I don't wanna say public because we're part of the public, probably not enough community involvement during our process feedback during the um during all of our meetings i think um would have been helpful uh, uh there are a lot of things that i'm hearing toward the end like from the park board and from corey and connie today that i hadn't really thought of um necessarily and so i think a little bit more involvement during the during the meetings would have been helpful um but again it's kind of nitpicking because you know this was a creative vision um, and something we've never done before. And uh, like I said, when I talked um, before, um, I just think Andrea and her team did an outstanding job and I really appreciate that. So thank you. And future, um, however I can be helpful, always wanting to be helpful. Thanks. Hey, Parker, do you have anything to add? You um, made some other comments before about the substance when we were on the substance topic and you kind of covered this ground, but did you want to add anything? Yeah, I can add something. So I think the organization of the meetings was really good. Um, like what Jason was saying, how the first few in meetings were informational and then the rest were discussion based. Um, another thing that I thought was good, I appreciated the use of polls. like. For me, at least, it was. It felt like a good way, just a quick way to get our, our um, our opinions across. And uh, just one more thing, I think that, like what Jason said again, I think in person meetings would have been a lot, um, a lot better for us. And I hope sometime maybe we can meet up. Thanks, Parker, Susan. Yeah, thank you. Um, I again, I just wanted to echo my. My thanks to Andrea, Jean, Juliana, Robert, the whole staff. I mean, when I look back at all the materials that were shared, all the time that was put into educating us on some of these topics that were not as familiar to some of us, I just, it, it was just a, a really heavy lift. And um, uh, Andrea, you have incredible patience and, and uh, a great style of um, making everybody feel um, uh, you know, gratitude for their contribution. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, one thing I thought was maybe just a little confusing for me, which got better over time, 
maybe just a thought for the next time you do this is I wasn't always clear. Um, like we all come from different either commissions or roles or, or uh, positions. And sometimes I wasn't sure if people were speaking um, on behalf of their sort of passion area or themselves as a citizen or something else. And sometimes it varied, you know, like clearly when we're talking about parks, you know, that's a very passionate area. So that came through. Like I'm from the Human Services Commission. I don't know that I really kind of brought that forth as much as I maybe should have. Like I could have said, well, on behalf of the Human Services Commission, here's what we're thinking. And so I'm I'm just wondering if that kind of clarity up front might be helpful to say, while you're here during this meeting, please answer as a citizen of Issaquah, or while you're here at this meeting, please answer as you know a representative of your specific area. And that that just might help me kind of like track like why are people arguing this way for that or against that. So um, I mean maybe that's just sort of what it's like to be on a <laughs> a, a, a commission in a, or a, a task force at, at the at the city level. And I was just again my first time doing this, so I was just kind of getting used to that lens. But um, again, overall great experience, and would love to help out in any way in the future. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councilman Marks. Go next. Thanks. Thanks. And again, 90 seconds. Uh, great group, th super thoughtful engagement, uh, really good leadership from Cynthia and Jamie and Andrea. Um, with a, when we, even when we had some big head scratcher moments, disagreement is fine. Uh, Councilmember Goodman and I disagreed often, and here we still are friends. Um, and so this group really, if as long as everybody is is engaged and thoughtful and professional, the disagreement part's great. Um, I think we were hobbled a little bit. I think it would have been more valuable if we had looked at proposed revenues and proposed expenditures. Um, and I hope future groups will. I, I use the home equity line of credit example. Um, we're in the midst of doing some minor renovations in our house, and you know, there's how much money you can take out. Um, and, and that's got a price associated with it. It, it you know, it's, um, it, it makes for a bigger mortgage <laughs> um, as you start exercising that home equity line of credit. And so for my wife and I, we had to have an idea of what we might do with the money before we could decide whether a certain amount of money was too much of a stretch or not. And, and so we got a rough idea and then we said, can we afford this? And that iterative process of how much can you afford versus what can you get for it? I don't think we could have just said, like, how big of a home equity line of credit do we want? Well, I don't know, like as much as we can get. So anyhow, my time's about up, but um, that's how I would like to see future groups. And I'd love to see a lot of your faces in a committee like that uh, as we look at other issues. My time is up. Thank you. Councilman Hall. Uh, thank you. Not a whole lot um, more to add. I think, you know, what we're hearing bubble up to and kind of what I was thinking as we were going through the meetings is, um, and is a good lesson learned. I mean, hindsight is always 2020, um, but it's difficult. It was difficult to consider and to keep our blinders on the CIP with, without, you know, also thinking about all of the potential trans transformative infrastructure solutions that could come to fruition or is difficult to think about. This was definitely relevant, difficult to think and consider buckets, but not projects. That that's, I think that issue bubbled up quite a bit in our discussions. So, I think just some lessons learned for um, task forces that might come in the future. Uh, and to that effect, I'm definitely interested in what the council has to say about the involvement of this task force moving into the future. I personally would see a benefit to um, these voices continuing on in the future um, in future conversations. Um, that build off this work, including the park district one that Brad was talking about. I mean, his brain would be perfect and a task force, something like that. So I think um, that answers that question. And yeah, I mean, we have some lessons learned with how the process went, but overall, I think it went great. And thank you, ditto. Thank you to Andrea. She's amazing. Jamie. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, yeah, I won't echo. I mean, I echo everyone's comments around feeling like the process, given a very difficult problem, Andrea in particular, but also the rest of staff and Cynthia have really done an amazing job leading us through it. And 
Um, it's hard to believe it's only like three or four months that we've been going through this process. It feels like a lot longer in my mind. Um, and I, I think one thing that Cynthia actually mentioned is how engaged people were and the attendance, just that, that in itself was incredible. So I think that was clearly, we had really engaging content and, and I, I, I applaud Andrea in particular on that. Um, I do think the big question I have is, is this process, how does it continue into the future? Because there's gonna be the parks district, there's going to be TBD sales tax, but then there's also this same question of like, what should we be prioritizing at the 40,000 foot level? So I am really curious because I do think there's value in thinking at that level. And, and so we'd be really interested in how that comes um, together. I think in one way for new revenue sources, but also in some ways the CIP, what is it funded and unfunded? Like that's our choice, and and so the the voice of the community, like we we that's our separation now. But I, I do wonder how similar conversations can be incorporated into into those uh, into what is actually funded within the CIP versus what is in need of of unfunded sources. Um, I think the only other thing is if we do get to the point that we're going to be doing another one of these task forces, one moment in time that we really want to revisit this is doing a checklist of like, what do we feel like that task force needs? And one of the things I'm thinking about is a community survey that really targets the type of feedback that we need to help us really hone in on what people want. And we're all gonna think that's a really important part of it. And so structuring that into any time that you're thinking about bringing a task force like this together. Um, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I, in terms of participation, I mean, I think this has been a, a really interesting and great learning experience. So I'd love to, to find any way to participate in next steps. But uh, no, I think great. And I'm just curious how it continues because I, I hope we don't, we spent a lot of time and effort getting to this point. And I hope that either us or more people or combination of the two continue this work and, and that we um, don't just stop here. So thank you. Okay, I think I'm last. Did I miss anybody? Okay, um, so uh, thank you um, everybody for everything. <laughs> um, I I want to I mean echo what people said about the staff. I think that one of the reasons that people uh, come back and serve on these boards is because we have a staff that has their act together, and it makes this kind of participation much more satisfying. Um, like everyone said, we don't have to agree, but we um, but having that kind of facilitation. Um, I also just want to point out that I was the one monitoring the chat and chairing the meeting, but uh, really Jamie and I were co-chairs. I mean, we spent a lot of time with staff in advance and we were really pretty much co-chairs um, as well as the fact that I think my attendance was probably the, I probably missed more meetings than anyone else on the task force, which is amazing. And of course things happen that are beyond our control, but wow, um, that was pretty inspiring to this, the attendance. Um, I also want to say that never say never, but the council members really struck uh, that was really striking to me to say that you've never had a chance to dive deep like this um, when you know in council. I was like, wow, I like I said, never say never, but that is a huge selling point of like never run for council because I love this level of discussion and I would probably be super frustrated if everything were a mile wide and inch deep. Um, but never say never. But uh, I also think that um, in the future, yeah, I mean, I love this. I would love to participate personally again in the future. Um, I think this, there's something really powerful about that. I want to say cross disciplinary, but that's not actually technically the correct word, but cross sort of interest level. I think there's something that happens when you um, have to, to um, negotiate across interest groups. Um, and then that leads me to something again, Susan, um, it kind of echoes something that Susan said in her point about who she represented. I actually asked that question. I probably should have asked it in the full meeting, but I asked that question of the mayor, I think, or maybe and or Andrea, because I have served on other commissions where I was representing an entity. And it's incredibly, it creates tremendous amount of institutional drag if you have to come to these meetings representing your committee. But if there is an elongated process that maybe lasts you know, 18 months, say, for example, it could be powerful and it could help address some of our public engagement issues if we came to the table with 
the um, support of our advisory boards that we are representing. So they wasn't just our own. I mean, I think this was a really good way to do it for this more intense. There's a lot that can get done and you focus the way that we focused. Um, so that would never have been possible for this short time frame. But I think it's something to consider in the future whether we actually would come here um, and formally represent. So we would, you know, make decisions in the committee. And I'm I always am really inspired by what Brad and the Parks Board did kind of on an ad hoc basis. I think that was pretty impressive that they were able to do that because that would require a lot of um, resources to do. Um, and just, you know, I said at the very beginning for you guys to be nice to me, I hadn't done um, led. You guys are a pretty high, highly capable group, uh, including council members on here. And so I was very, very intimidated, but you all made me feel very comfortable. Um, I enjoyed it very much. And any feedback anybody has to share with me offline, um, you know, that would certainly be helpful to me. Um, I enjoyed this very much and learned an awful lot. And um, I just thank everybody for your time and your interest. And I'm hoping that Mayor Polly got the answers to her questions. Do you want to leave us with some thoughts? Sure, Cynthia, I have about four minutes as well. So if I sign off abruptly, I apologize. Um, I wrote a couple of notes while you all were talking, so I won't repeat all the wonderful thank yous, but this is really a fascinating group for me to follow and work with. Um, I love the word framework that Susan used. I see what you did as painting a framework that the council can take and move through various processes to help them. So I love that word. I thought that was very appropriate. I also understood how difficult it was for everybody to work on a buckets without knowing the projects that are in it. I think uh, Tola's example of, you know, when you're doing your home renovations was a good one. However, I felt it was really necessary not to talk about what projects were in it. And again, it was because I didn't want to get to that level of having you advocate for certain types of projects or certain projects. Um, I think there's another whole phase that's going to come here where this framework will be applied to a project list. And I would love to share that with you and show you what that looks like with this framework and what those options might be for council to consider. So I think there is a big next step coming, but I wasn't sure if we could get through all our work if we went that far this time. So I got everything that I needed from you uh, on my original questions. Representation, Susan, um, I invited you all because of who you are and not necessarily which groups you represent. You know, I'd been sitting around sketching with council president about how to fill out all these chairs and where we came was, we wanted to make sure we had good geographic representation, good demographic representation. And that's why we also added a youth voice as well. Um, so thank you very much for your comments, Parker, on what worked well for you and what did not, that was great. But I did not want you to necessarily feel you were bearing the, you know, the responsibility for whatever border commission you were on and bringing it back and bringing stuff forward. I really just invited you as resident, all as residents. Um, and I think the last thing I had on here was future council discussions. So there's, this is going to kick off a lot of great conversations. When I mentioned earlier that council doesn't necessarily have the opportunity the project lists come during the budget and the budget has a lot of different components to it. And the opportunity to really do what you did over how many meetings, I'm not sure, Andrea, um, we just don't get that all the time. And so the fact that you would give so much of your time to develop this framework is fantastic. And it could change the way we talk about um, which projects fit in and what our program looks like. So I appreciate it very, very much. So Cynthia, and Jamie, thank you so much for stepping up and taking on the chair and vice chair. Andrea, so much for bringing all the staff in. So many staff came and provided such great information for this group. And also this is the first time I've ever worked with a task force that had elected and residents and students on it. And it worked out great. It worked out great. I'm just really proud of all the work you did. Uh, I'm looking forward to the presentation, Cynthia. I think it will go well. And I'll give Andrea the last couple of minutes to wrap up if she'd like, but thank you all so much. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So we talk about future participation. Uh, the next step here is 
for the presentation to occur at City Council next week. Uh, so that meeting is uh, taking place on the 7th and should begin at 7 p.m. This item is the second item on regular business. Um, so hopefully uh, we can see you all there. The next council meeting, by the way, will also be the first council meeting uh, in a very long time that is in person. Uh, so you are welcome to participate uh, virtually or you're welcome to attend in person. Um, and so uh, there's some options there. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask me and uh, I, can help, um, I can help problem solve for you in terms of how you'd like to participate. All task force members are invited to attend. Uh, can I get a quick show of hands by those who think they may attend the council meeting next week? Well, thank you, council members. I, I hope you would attend. All right. So uh, I didn't quite see a quorum. Uh, I'm asking this on behalf of the city clerk. We need to notice the meeting properly if it's going to be a joint meeting. Um, but it doesn't appear that there's going to be a quorum. So um, actually, there will be because the council members are counted twice. So good to know. All right. I'll pass that on to the clerks. Um, and really, that meeting is uh, Cynthia and Jamie are going to take the lead on the presentation, but certainly turn it over to uh, other task force members. If you have additional things you want to say, you can help answer questions from council. Um, just because you're not giving the participation doesn't mean there won't be opportunities for you to speak. So I encourage you uh, to attend. The next step after that will be, uh, so council's action will be to receive the report that you've written um, and receive your recommendations. Then the next step is really to hear council feedback. That meeting is occurring on, uh, on March 15th. Um, it's a study session, therefore it'll start at 6.30 p.m. on March 15th uh, to really talk about what are those next steps in implementation and where do we go from here and to hear from council members and what they would like, um, or where they would like to go. Uh, based on your recommendations. So that's kind of the next discussion, next couple steps. Really encourage you to stay involved, help your neighbors get involved. Um, and we'll, we'll um, looking forward to hearing what the rest of council has to say about your recommendations report. Um, and very finally, uh, I appreciate all of the compliments. I really want to pass those on to Jean and Juliana and Robert. Um, who did a lot of work and without whose support uh, this would have been almost impossible. So very strong thanks to Jean and Juliana and Robert. And um, really, uh, y'all have been very easy to work with. So I appreciate all the credit given, but I would put that back on you. I mean, this has been an amazing group, and I truly mean that. And Cynthia and Jamie have worked very hard, and I uh, really appreciate their involvement and their guidance every step of the way. So. Um, that's just been a wonderful working relationship. So truly, thank you. This has been, you've made it very easy on me. Um, so really appreciate that. And I hope uh, to see most of you, at least some of you next week at the city council meeting. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like we're, that's a wrap. Huh? Yeah. All we right. will be. We hopefully will be doing something fun in the summer. So we will get you all face to face. See you all. Thank you. All right. Bye. Good night, everybody. And Parker. One thing it took me it took me a while to learn, Parker, is it's actually good to just be a good active listener. You don't need to talk a lot to have a big impact. When you listen a lot. And when you say very little, but what you say has impact, the perception of you and how much you contribute actually goes up. Um, and something I could work on, but something that you're going to be way ahead of the game with anyone else in your age bracket for sure. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yes.